live from the Magic and Wisdom Studio. <laughs> May it's 11th. Joseph and Angela. <laughs> and it's May 11th, which is the day before Mother's Day. Yes. So I'm going to just say happy Mother's Day to you, Angela. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and of course, happy Mother's Day to our mother, the earth. Mm-hmm. There's okay. a, um, I'll, I'll do it again for my dance tribe. Um, there's a Banksy um, drawing, you know, Banksy, the uh, English artist who no one knows it is, but he ends up public art that just ends up showing up someplace. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. So <laughs> there's a stenciled guy who's basically throwing a Molotov, Molotov cocktail, but instead of a Molotov cocktail, he's got a bouquet of flowers. Oh. Okay. And so he's throwing the flowers into whatever the situation is. And it's just, it's one of those um, kind of the disruptive or the organic, the disruptive of the um, emotional, but also that one is bringing into the public space flowers, <laughs> you know, and I love the, uh, the rhyme, the, the powers of flowers and the emotional balancing and the emotional exploration that um, the flower oils offer us. So um, this is part of what Mother's Day is for me. Um, you know, my mom's on the other side, whatever that means. I'm sure in her point of view, I'm on the other side. Um, I'm going to do this real quick. Yes, this was the first Mother's Day that yeah. I haven't had an address to send a mother's oh. card to my mom. You do. It's just, it's a very yeah. special delivery, okay? Um, yeah, yeah you're true. But it. so what I've done is I've spent a lot of time in the garden um, mm. just thinking about her energy as I've been tending the garden. And we have some beautiful blooms in the garden right now. Our wild onions are blooming and I've been sharing those blossoms because they're edible. Yeah. Uh, chives. Well, I've got calla lilies, which are absolutely oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, the tulips are done, but I have bleeding hearts and columbine and just some wonderful things. The poppies are coming up nicely, so we'll have some more color. I like to have a garden that has color uh, in stages, so mm-hmm. having that, yeah. Yeah. I'll do very quickly. See, um, I don't know how this is going to look. Ooh. Can you see this is a heart shape? Yeah. Glass, okay. And you see the gray there? Mm-hmm. That's my mom. Oh, I have a, yeah, I have a, a globe that has her ashes swirled in it yeah so it cool. one of those things and maybe this is why flowers are having more meaning today um i have four sisters they wanted absolutely nothing to do with the ashes you know mm-hmm. so they sat in a box in my garage for a number of years um mm-hmm. and the i didn't really want a box of ashes in my garage all mm-hmm. right brandy Yay. hello I love, um, the, I love the photo you have up, Brandy, with the solar um, pieces. Oh, thank there. you. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah, Hello. last night's moon was a toenail moon, I call it. You could see the <laughs> sliver, but then you could see the halo of the rest of the moon. It was so cool. Very, 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 and then with the Aurora Borealis lights, we went up yes. out of the city to see, and we didn't see those, but the, turned the moon bright pink. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, really cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're welcome so, today. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the powers of flowers. And then one other thing we were thinking about was this, what did you call it? Um, Buddha's triangle. Yeah, okay. Buddha's triangle. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Can I show my cool little graphic just to get a visual on it? Okay. All right. Here's my cool graphic. I know you have cool graphics today too. Da, da, da. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. something about that that's just cool. <laughs> yes, indeed. Like okay, can I show my graphic now? Huh? Huh? Can I? Can yeah, I? yeah. Show your graphic. <laughs> so, Brandy, this is how we roll on these uh, recordings. Joseph and I get together and we play with the magic and wisdom of essential oils, and then we find ways to put it into practical everyday in a crazy world, uh, applications. <laughs> Perfect. So here and we I, are. I say, and this graphic looks a little familiar, Joseph. <laughs> well, I have a format, you know what I mean? I do. 
Mm-hmm. And you've seen all of these points before, which is one of the things I love about this. It's like um, an old friend coming around for another time and you're getting to learn more about them. Um, really, and These ones, they're very handy. <laughs> Un- unintended. Well, totally. I mean, that's where the word comes from, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll get into it later, but they're also very gatey. Um, there's an inner frontier gate, there's a spirit gate, and then there's a great abyss. You know, and I'm hoping that there's a gate before the great abyss so I don't just fall into it. <laughs> exactly. I'll walk in front of you, Joseph. It'll be fine. <laughs> You're a brave lass. Okay, yeah. listen, if anyone's going to fall into an abyss, it's me. So might as well just, might as well look like it's on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, there are certainly, I mean, we just talk about the loss of our mothers, okay? That was certainly an abyss moment for me. Um you know, and it's reverberated well, you know, 12 years out, okay? Um, but that first couple of years, that was uh, a lot of soul searching. Um, with any great loss in our life, I'm, I, I hope there is that. Um, not that it's easy. The word easy did not occur in any of those sentences, okay? Um, but that we have something we can do with our heart stuff, our mind stuff, our beingness in those situations, that's useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, just when I think of of going through that, uh, because my mother passed last September, and so this is the first Mother's Day without her um, in a physical form, that I was so grateful to oils like black spruce for holding space for me and keeping me grounded for helichrysum for, you know, working with those deeper wounds and for things like neroli and um, even jasmine for holding a loving space for me during that time. I don't know what I would do without the aromatherapy during that time. It was a real godsend to me. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe a, even a goddess send to you. Yes. <laughs> Without getting too politically correct or incorrect. Uh-huh. Um, so, and you mentioned her earlier when we were talking before this, um, a flower oil that you've been working with this last week. Yeah, I was working with Neroli. I mean, I took it to to my yoga classes with me. I, you know, hung out with it a lot. And I used it on these points in you know, um, I had been using sandalwood and copaiba uh, on the, the Buddhist triangle. But this one, and, and those were wonderful uh, because I think both of those oils are spiritual in nature. But there were, and they, they, they keep me grounded and they keep me in sort of my meditative space uh, with those points. But there was something about neroli that was so much more nurturing. And I, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to play with it, uh, especially coming up on Mother's Day, because it it gave me the nurturing, the the lovingness that I felt like I needed uh, in this week. And also, uh, you know, I wanted to mention we're we're having this um, solar storm where there's a lot of radioactive stuff going on out there, and I mean, even NASA was putting out uh, warnings for satellites that could get uh, messed up and communication systems could go down and things like that. So I've been trying to be very vigilant about how I'm communicating, what I'm communicating and, you know, all the quote static that goes on uh, every day in our lives that we have to navigate, whether there's a solar storm going on or not. <laughs> so, there was that. Just that. Well, maybe we should get an oil yes no let each person pick their oil and put it on these three points um and talk from there yeah we'll be under the influence so to speak (laughs) yeah let me just see which ones are on my desk because having having gone to joseph's classes before i must have 50 oils that are just oils and then all the combinations Mm -hmm. (laughs) So they don't all live on my desk. So I'm just saying, you know, what I actually have on my desk is coincidentally is Palo Santo. Oh, okay. awesome. And peppermint. And peppermint. Okay, I mean, what am I going to use? 
in a teaching point of view, I think these three points in a sacred tree or a flower oil, they're kind of in the natural, okay? Yeah, and I, here we go, look. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can make a little heart shape. No, I'm kidding. Yes. Oh, and lavender. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Mm. He's heart shaped. You should see my desk. I'm just looking around. There's all these little bottles of <laughs> Me too. Yeah, me too. That's so unlike me. That's so unlike Angela. <laughs> I'm like, what else is on my desk here? <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, the alchemical medicinal aspect of having all these oils around is not lost on anyone. Um, yeah. I'm always wanting to bring them to a new organization, and then I completely break that up so I can use them and then put it back and back and forth. Mm. Yeah. This is nice because I can smell this oil on my fingers as I hold this point. So this is really powerful. Yeah. Well, and you can do the, you know, CV-17. Yes, fun. you could take the, the, yeah, you could. I don't know ergonomically if I could do that and still get PC-6 on there. Well, they're pretty much in each other's aura, okay? Yes. And so this may be a, um, we generate a field from here. That, that has been the uh, integration of the solar storm. And the other storms. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. I I have a special relationship with Neroli. Um, the woman who made me a Reiki master and Reiki master teacher, okay? Beverly Ferris, okay? She's still around, but she's in an elder care facility and she's talking with other levels, which she did most of her life. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Neroli was one of those oils that let her be in her space um, with a lot less self judgment. And she just loved it. Um, way back when, with uh, what was it with Tiffany, the Oil of the Month Club? Um, uh, the Healing Oil, oil Club. Club. Yeah. Um, I call it my nickname was Oil of the Month Club. Okay. Um, when we did, and uh neroli the history of the name of the oil is so rich you know and so female and then that um people associate it with drawing in angels okay yes. um you know my western scientifically trained mind goes uh-huh but then the other part of me goes that's so interesting whoa um that would be my mother's side of the family if you will um but this was one that really, she came to be at home with herself and her self-judgment moved out of the picture for a while. Mm -hmm. And that was really, I mean, literally very sweet and also very nourishing. Mm -hmm. well, um, and that an oil can do that. Whoa. Absolutely. Absolutely. An oil can do that. And when we amplify it with these points, it's, it's next level. It really is next level. Mm. Say more about next level. Well, you know, Joseph, I have this theory. Uh -oh. Here we go. <laughs> and it starts with the hundred monkey, hundredth monkey. Uh-huh. Oh, Brandy. yeah. Yes. Uh, Brandy, do you know the hundredth monkey story? No. Okay. So there was a group of researchers uh, studying monkeys on these various islands in Asia, and they would throw fruit out there on the beach for them to eat every day so that they could get them to come out and, and study them. So uh, the, the fruit would get sand all over it, but they would eat it anyway. And one day they observed a monkey on one of the islands who took the fruit down to the water and washed it off. And then pretty soon the other monkeys started doing that. And then other monkeys on other islands were doing that. And pretty soon, every monkey on every island was doing that. Now, these monkeys did not have text messages <laughs> or cell phones <laughs> or, you know, internet or smoke signals or anything like that. But there was something, something energetically that was happening. Right. So my theory is that if we start gatherings like this or learning circles or whatever it might be with acu aromatherapy and we're using this and we're creating these embodied experiences and we're talking about it that more of these circles will populate the planet 
And pretty soon we'll be raising the vibration of the globe. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I totally agree because while yours is more clinically documented, it's the same reason that names get popular at the same time mm-hmm. around the world. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because there's a collective. Yeah. There's some collective that connects all of us. Right. And yeah, we all start to pick it up. And then you think you're the most unique human on earth. And you find out you just named your kid the top one, on, one of 100 names of that year. You know what I mean? So Right. Right. Yeah. Baby names are, are a really good example of that, too. Yeah. So, you know, my mission is and, you know, my mission is through the card deck and through, you know, classes that Joseph and I both teach that we're raising the vibration of the planet in at a time when it's most needed M- needed more than memes needed more than <laughs> you know whatever else is going on out there that this is a, a way for people to self regulate and get back to what's really important and be themselves in the process right be and isn't that of- one of the hardest things to do with social media and the collective is still be your authentic, unique self. Absolutely. See, my children are 21 and 23 and I see my 23 year old struggle with that every day. Mm. Yeah. My 21 year old does not give a crap, but my 23 year old struggles with it every day of how to be authentic to himself and still fit in. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and the whole, I mean, is fitting in a detriment to one's being genuine? Or is being genuine the ideal way or a a good way to fit in? And saying that fitting in is not easy. Um, The, especially, you know, um, I worked on a 20 year old um, the other day. Okay. Neat young lady. She's an organic um, farming uh, intern at the organic garden I live across the street from. And the tension in her body from trying to figure out what to do when she grows up. Okay. Um, And, you know, what that might mean in terms of right livelihood. Um, And then, you know, there is the cell phones, there is the technology, there is the social media, there is climate change, there is all the ferment you could ever want and more. Um, And just how to be, let alone explore and become oneself. I, you know, I, it, I ain't done with the job on myself by any stretch of the imagination, but I have a lot of uh, compassion for someone coming of age um, in this time, um, let alone this environment. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. And then oh, go ahead. for women, you know, in my practice, I'm working with women on their menopause journey. That's sort of like, Here's your one last opportunity to decide what your authenticity is. And if you're going to not really give a rip about what the rest of the world thinks. And it's very liberating. And I wish that 20 year olds could be able to do that way before they come to that last phase of their life uh, to to figure it out. Um, So, um, again, I think the oils can can do that. So. You know, Joseph, to your point, and actually, actually, you just said it too, the authenticity, we've been really blessed in my home um, for my fiance to have an opportunity at turning 50 to pick what he wants to do when he grows up, which mm-hmm. he could not have done at 20 or 30 or 40. Right. And when he did, he picked, by the way, massage therapy. He found his tribe. Mm-hmm. So what I would tell my kids now is if you go and you're learning or working or experiencing and you feel accepted you're on the right track if you're struggling you're not Mm -hmm. is what i've learned in the last i don't know year which i just turned 56 so speaking of not being on your you know finished with your own journey right yeah Yeah. um so meanwhile back at the points um yes so tell us joseph how can these points help us to find our authenticity and uh, help raise self-regulate and be part of this wild world. <laughs> wow. Am I that obvious? Um, <laughs> um, well, this is an emotional triangle. I call it the emotional balancing triad. Mm-hmm. All right. 
and having self-regulation, it seems like such a dry term, but it's so damn important, of one's own emotional life um, also gives that to one's own mental life. Because if you try and balance the mind without balancing the emotions, you're just kidding yourself. Um, and these points are extremely useful. Again, the pun intended, very handy. Okay. And uh, I love teaching them to people just so they start playing with them. And even just taking the time to go, oh, shit. And then I need a point gives you a, that moment of not being in the oh shit but being in the where would i rather be or what do i need to do next okay and um <clears throat> quite frankly it beats being stuck in the shit okay and it also gives <laughs> the shit a chance to be manure it gives the shit a chance to be um transforming so into something that might be useful Yes, and I love the way it hits three very important parts of our biological self, but which translates to our emotional self. We have the lungs, mm -hmm. which is life. Mm -hmm. It brings, brings life. It's a detoxer. It's a filter. It, it brings us life force energy. We have digestion with PC6, helping regulate digestion, which is how we digest our life experiences. And then bringing that back to the heart space to really be <clears throat> our authenticity in our heart space. How are we, how are, how are we taking our heart out into the world and how are we bringing the world into our heart? So I think those three places within the body as body systems are very closely connected and important to stay um, connected with. Yeah. Yeah. The, the topography of where the points are has a lot to do with the meaning of the points. So if my whole body is a planet or a landscape, okay, hands are where I come into and interact with the world, okay? Um, <clears throat> we want to buy something that is handmade, okay? Um, he's a handy man. She's a handy woman. Um, it is how we interact and work on this earthly plane, especially in a social way, right? Isn't this, Brandy, what we were just talking about with your kids, okay? Um, what are they going to do for their livelihood, right? What are they going to put their hands, hearts, and minds to, right? And with uh, the Chinese organs, we have the heart, that central expressive soul, all right, the pericardium, the heart protector, okay? And then we have these lungs on each side, okay, which are a prime minister within the, the imagery that are helping regulate what is, where the chi is coming into and out of the heart and how that is actually going into the hands. Um, so I'm gonna do this and see if I get away with it. Well, also as the heart, this pericardium, uh, PC6 being the heart protector, but also the gateway to those deep emotions. Yeah. Uh, such a beautiful point. I'm going to share something because I can, and I think I can even make the technology work for me. Sometimes I'm amazed. Ta -da! <laughs> <laughs> Truly. In spite of solar flares today, he was able to I will, do this. I will try not to be too nerdy, okay? <laughs> but every, pec every picture tells a story, don't it? Okay? And on the left upper, okay, you can see the saloon doors from the Old West movie, can't you? Okay? And this is a door that is common in northern China, especially it's a summertime door. So the breeze can come in, but you have some privacy too. Okay, um, but it's a door that's fairly easy opened, all right? And these mun gate door entrance opening, all right? There's major gates in the body. Heart seven is one of these gates, all right? Um, in the back of the body, bladder forty seven is way this uh, this the spirit of vocation, avocation, 
the calling comes in and out of the body. And then there's the big Ming Men gate, which is your destiny. Just wait, organ music. Nee, 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 nee. Your yeah, destiny gate. Okay. Mm-hmm. I love that point. Yeah. Um, it ends up I every day I love one point a little bit more and I love them all, right? Um then to the right, Guan. And you see how in that open gate, there's all sorts of stuff going on. All right. And the two things that are up there that go like this, Mm -hmm. the little squiggles on top, Mm -hmm. okay, those are threads of silk usually, but there's some sort of something that's going to be woven. And then below are two sticks. So you're weaving together sticks to put into the gate so something can't get in or only something can get in if you open up the sticks or move the sticks, okay? And this is translated as a frontier pass or a frontier gate. So in the modern world, when you go to the airport, you got to go through TSA. And they're going to shake you down and make sure you got a ticket, an identification, a real ID, okay? And then they'll let you through the gate, all right? So these are gates just like the Mun are, but you have to have permission to get through them, Okay. You have to go through some sort of a ritual at least. Or you can pay the 150 bucks and get the pass for five years. <laughs> that, that's a ritual, okay? You're still going to go through the gate, but you've been pre-cleared, okay? All right. Yeah, it, it, that says so much about our culture. Oh, you're pre-cleared. You paid the cash. Um, <laughs> hey, Guan, this is pericardium six, is this inner frontier pass. And with a pericardium being the protector for the heart, this is a gateway into the depth of the heart, literally into the chambers of the heart. Okay. Um, this is one of those things where it's like, it, normally when you see this point translated, it's called inner gate. And the heart seven is called spirit gate. And in English, they're the same gate. They're not in Chinese, okay? And what that shows is there's the opening and closing that is natural to the heart because that's how the heart beats and gets blood to flow is open and close those little gates that are inside in the four chambers, okay? But the pericardium gate, okay, or this frontier pass, um, it's getting into something so deep that there needs to be, you want there to be a level of protection, um, I'm going to do this. We're back. <clears throat> this is in, in all three points in this triangle are really interesting. Okay. The great abyss, just life and death. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. Spirit gate. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then this one that there is a, um, when you're going into deeper territory, Make sure you got a passport. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's within me, but that's also when I'm working with someone and we're heading into deeper territory. Um, realizing um, there's a level of permission, a level of trust, and a level of um, being there to listen. Um, that pericardium six guards, protects, and honors. And and don't you feel, Joseph, like, at least I do, that the oil itself is part of that passport? Yeah. So, you know, I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about, so if we're going to use this Buddha's triangle, mm-hmm. what might, might we expect to experience with either copaiba or... Mm. sandalwood or neroli or brandy which what did you use you were using palo santo yeah i went palo santo and then because of uh more flower lavender as well Uh uh-huh so i mean we could use three different oils on you know each of these points but if we were just going to use one and have some sort of symbiotic uh experience with one i mean let's take uh copaiba or what did you use sandalwood on yours, Joseph? Well, I actually went with your neroli. Oh, you did? Okay. All right. Um, 
So, well, let's just take sandalwood because I think of sandalwood as, and we've talked about this in previous um, vodcasts of uh, it's, it's a spiritual oil and, and it's an oil that, I mean, I got this one from you, so it's sustainably sourced that we're being more mindful in the aromatherapy world about uh, making it sustainable and uh, protecting and preserving this precious wood. So um, the experience with that, and, you know, we've used that on this, uh, just in practice, in private practice, um, there's a softening for me within that, um, a softening, but, but an, also an ability, sort of like spring energy, the ability to stay flexible, but giving me a grounding. So there's, it, there's a base that that gives me, uh, but with flexibility. Mm-hmm. I don't know what anyone else's experience is with it. And you've done a lot of work with sandalwood. So yeah. maybe you have something to share. Well, that, um, you know, the, <clears throat> the sandalwood that you have, the sandalwood that I decided I had to have a kilogram. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. It's so okay. amazing. <laughs> um, it's the result of a, of a labor of love over 20 plus years. Uh, people who are silviculturists, Okay. Now there are people that are foresters that are looking for how many board feet of lumber there are in a forest and how to manage it to make sure the Boise cascade is happy. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> and there are people called silviculturists that are looking at how to reproduce or make a forest healthier. All right. And very shortly, this group of people got into the forest in Sri Lanka and India. Okay. And People had always just gone into the forest and cut the tree down to get sound of wood for carving and shoes way back when, Mm -hmm. and to get the oil. Okay. And it it's that's mining the resource. And what they did is they learned how the forest created sound of wood and sandalwood oil. And then they found a way to replicate that in soil in another area and to do the thing no one had ever really done before, and that's propagate sandalwood from seed. And then create an environment for it to grow well and to do a silvicultural, okay? And, <clears throat> I mean, they are successful. They keep going, all right? They had a couple of times where they crashed and burned, which is really never good in a forest, okay? And they now have a sustainable product that actually has impacted the poaching of sandalwood in India and Sri Lanka, to the level where India and Sri Lanka are now sending scientists down to North Australia to learn how to grow Indian sandalwood. Beautiful. Okay. So the genome was saved, but also um, we're learning how to grow it. We're learning how to encourage the forest. Um, I'll get off that soapbox for a moment and just the prayerful, um, calming, um, calming the mind Um, within the Ayurvedic world um, sandalwood is a very sattvic oil Mm -hmm. okay it has a spiritual calming effect on the mind body and spirit which in the middle of a solar storm or the middle of a pandemic or the middle of 2024 is probably a useful thing to have access to yeah okay So these three points and that oil, I can hold my head on, but I'm doing the points. Yeah. And, you know, Brandy, back to your, you know, your kids. Um, This is one of the oils I teach for sustainability, for climate change. Okay. Because they're creating more biomass. Think about how much... To get to an oil, sandalwood trees need to be about 20, 25 years. In the wild, they need to be about 30 to 55 years old. So they found a way to sequester carbon faster, create a forest, and they created a forest that is more biodiversity than had been there before, okay? Which means they can also go rescue some of the biodiversity in Sri Lanka and India. But that is a calm, steady mind, which is really never true of a farmer, but that's what they have in their heart. <laughs> you know, anyone who's growing 
Angela, you were a gardener, okay? There's a calm place in your heart for the 10,000 things you have to do today, okay? Not to mention weeding, okay? Or so watering. I'm already yeah. watering more this year than I was in the past because it's been warmer. Yeah, and it's going to be that way for years to come, mm-hmm. you know? So where was I? I was out there with Sandalwood, thank God, um, or goddess, um, or the deity of your choice in that case. Um, <laughs> that ability to go out of the busyness of what we think we're supposed to do. Okay. And into something that comes from our heart, you know, through our hands, through our lungs, through our, from the pericardium opening. Okay. I think that would be a good way to figure out what our livelihood is rather than where can I get a job? Okay. If I, you know, or chasing what social media thinks we should be doing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you're not successful unless you're posting 15 things every day with reels that you it's like forget it. It, it it's hyper busy like our cultural mind and heart are okay um i don't want to get into too much social critique but um in the larger society the most prestigious and remunerative jobs quite often have that keep it moving keep it busy um so sandalwood let's talk about the heartwood i mean really when we when we're working with sandalwood when we're trying to bring this into our lives in a, a, a meaningful way we have to get to the heart of things and when we when we do things from the heart space it's so much easier and it's, it's so much easier to not think about what the rest of the world is thinking about us because we're heart centered. And when we get in that mind space where the heart and the mind are not connected, which we can connect with these points, then we can be in that space to know what to do next or what to do in the moment, whichever is appropriate. Right. And I think Copaiba speaks to that as well. Um, Although it has a little bit different quality for me personally, Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, for me, it doesn't go quite as deep as sandalwood does, but I do feel there is that relaxing quality that I can relax into it with these, with these points. Um, I do feel like it is a spiritual oil. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, it's a spiritual oil from really very teeming tropics. Um, the Amazon forest versus the sandalwood forest, mm-hmm. okay? And so there is, there's a difference, okay? Um, and not that the sandalwood forest doesn't have monsoons, but it doesn't have anywhere near the water that Amazon has, which means it doesn't have anywhere near the insect life and burden, okay? And pollination, but also um, Copaiba seems to make this oil because it's been it's protecting itself from all those little bites. Okay. <clears throat> and the, the protective nature of resins from trees. Okay. Which is where we get the oils from trees. Okay. There are leaf oils, but I'm talking now about the heartwood oil. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a protection and a resilience. Um, it, there is a very pericardial piece to it. Okay. It's protective. Okay. And it helps it open. And it helps it heal wounds. And having spent some time, you know, on the Riviera Maya and the Yucatan Peninsula, I when I smell copaiba I, and then smell sandalwood, it's almost like I can feel the cultural nature of it too. Uh, it's crazy. I, and I don't even know how to explain that. But I can feel the culture of the people of copaiba yeah 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 it has a little brazil to it um yeah what if the culture came from the land and the plants rather than the other way around yeah absolutely and i've spent time in sri lanka so so i know the culture of sandalwood as well Mm -hmm. um so it's it's been fun to compare or experience it uh both of those so yeah, and maybe that that can be part of exploration for people who are working with oils, you know, to to 
know about the culture. And I think that's what we're trying to do here in the magic and wisdom of essential oils is expose people to the folklore and the culture of oils and then how you use those on the points and how all of that is part and one of the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, I love sandalwood and I could talk about it forever and I'll probably do that sometime soon. Okay. Well, forever is a long time, so I'll, I'll just keep doing it. Um, <clears throat> but I want to go back to um, what you brought today, the neroli, okay? Yes. Um, so theoretically, it's named after the princess of Nerola, Italy, okay? And theoretically, I mean, later after the naming of it, it becomes an oil that the ladies of the night in Seville, Spain use to advertise their services while they're walking on the street. Okay, so they're fragrant street walkers. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and it, with honor and with grace. All right, and then the, the legend, at least around Norola, okay, is that <clears throat> she centered her parchment. Remember, people used to write letters. Okay, and in this era, people wrote letters with quills and it, it, heart and soul on parchment. OK, and so this is actually a document that's being created, not a text that's being sent and forgot. And that you realize oh. that you have to do spell check on because you really messed it up. And that energy is flowing right through all three of those points. Right. In fact, coming to <laughs> that. Yeah. Okay. And <clears throat> she's said to have scented her um, boots. She was a horse rider, her riding gloves and her undergarments. OK. Um, who was she sending them for? I'm going to leave that alone because I don't know. Okay. But in terms of um, a woman being empowered and empowering herself, that's a pretty interesting metaphor, um, you know, or set of facts. Um, another thing I just love, I got an Aroli oil from original Swiss aromatics and their Aroli oil is from, um, <clears throat> Uh, it's not, it's the tree that bergamot comes from, but a different, slightly different species. Okay. And this particular oil was taken from trees that had been retired from growing the bergamot um, that went into the queen's marmalade. Okay. Within England, you know, there would be royal um, dispensations that we will get your tea we will get your jam we will have your cookies and these will have the royal authority it, it, it's advertisement it's it's a it, you know it's an endorsement whatever mm -hmm. but that the, the enrolli that i had was from cheese trees that had been retired from fruit production and were still being used for flower production and make the neroli oil um and to think of the the history and lineage of those trees okay being expressed um for centuries okay and into the oil i was like mm -hmm. yeah yeah no, um, can, uh, can i tell an egypt story sure okay so when i was in egypt with the naha tour in 2019 we went to we were going to different farms and factories in the nile basin of the <clears throat> the the river there and we went to one of the farm factories that was harvesting neroli. So when we arrived, they had neroli flowers out on tarps that were drying, but they were still harvesting. So tarps were laid out underneath the neroli trees. And as we walked between the rows of trees, they were tapping on them and the neroli blossoms were falling on our heads and shoulders and at our feet. And uh, and there were little egrets on this, the white egrets uh, to the sides, like picking, you know, bugs and stuff that we were kicking up as we walked through here. It was the most magical moment in in my life that was like, it was like being wrapped up into a National Geographic episode and something out of body and it was fantastic. And then we got to help trim the trees so that they grew properly. Um, they had the the leaves, so they were doing a distillation of the pedigree uh, at the same time. It was it was a full package that day. And 
just the euphoria that I had that carried me late into the night that that night was just like let's do that again tomorrow (laughs) and the next day and the next day (laughs) yeah and the people that were there the orchard workers were so happy they were so excited to share their work and and their craft with us so you felt like that energy was also going into this distillation it was quite an experience yeah yeah i'll never forget it (laughs) yeah when when i'm teaching flowers i often have people become aware of the time of day that the flowers are picked for distillation okay and any good farmer is going to want to pick the flower at the time it has the most oil in it, you know. And so for rose, you've got to pick it before dawn, okay, because the waxes that are in the rose oil um, are so volatile that if the temperature gets much above 60 degrees, they just go. They're gone, okay. Um, neroli tends to be picked during the height of the day. Um, its flower has the most oils in it at solar noon, if you will, okay? So it is a very solar oil where um, rose is a dawn oil. Um, And, you know, uh, night blooming jasmine, when do you think they pick that? 3 (laughs) a.m. At night. That's when they were out in the fields. (laughs) Yeah. And so there is um, a time signature piece to it. Um, and it's just with all flowers, the oils, it's a moment. I, I talk about trees are the oil of a lifetime. Um, the citrus fruit shows a whole annual cycle. All right. Flowers are the magic of that moment. Mm-hmm. And Angela, you had a very magical moment there. It, yeah. And there's only a specific time during the day in the cycle of a flower where it sends out its pheromones to call in the pollinators, um, which is really interesting. Uh, Power to the pollinators. Power to the pollinators. (laughs) Yes. I have my little um, sticker from the pollinator affair that I was at this last time where I set up the still. This uh, is a, a sticker that was made from a painting that one of the organizers daughters did that we raffled off. But it's got the hummingbird. It's got a moon behind the hummingbird's head there. Yeah. And a bee up there in the clouds with the flowers. It was so cute. Oh, yeah. So, yes. Get me a really high resolution scan of that, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, I mean, look at this. <laughs> now, neroli and sandalwood are an excellent combination. Absolutely. Okay. They're calming and euphoric. Okay which is really, really nice at various times of life, calming and euphoric, okay? Especially when you literally come just out of the rat race and you're trying to figure out how am I going to wind down, you know, and how am I going to have some quality time, okay? This is when I put on John Coltrane, okay? (laughs) This is when I, I mix the sandalwood and the neroli and get a little bit into the rhythm of life. Okay, the flow of life, not the busyness of life. Yeah, step off the hamster wheel and you know, just just be. Yeah, just yeah. be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All that oil from a flower and a tree. Oh my god. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I want to hear, Brandy. I want to hear from you. Like, what was your experience with the oil that you used? Um, yeah. And just sitting. I mean, I don't. We didn't. It's like Palo actually, Santo and it, lavender. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice, very open, Mm -hmm. very warm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that warmth. Yeah, right. Just that that oil hug. Uh You know, you know what I mean. Um, I'm glad I added the lavender to it because Palo Santo can some make sometimes get me a little too far in my head, Mm -hmm. and I need to lighten up sometimes. So I'm glad I added the lavender to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you can do this before you go to work and then no one knows. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, it's interesting because as I said, as I look around my desk, I actually have a couple of, you know, concoctions, right? And I have a sage rosemary here mm. that I like midday, little pick me up. 
it always kind of picks me up. But I also have um, jasmine rose here too. And that I do like more in the evenings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, talking Those about flower, flower combinations are mellowing. <laughs> they are. Yeah. They really are. Um, talking about what we have on our desks as aromatherapists and people in this industry. Um, I have cypress cones yeah. because I'm going to be talking uh, this next week about lung points and cypress. And look how much this looks like the little alveoli in the lung. Yeah. And yeah, it's that. such like, a great visual. Very much so. <laughs> and it's still got seeds that are still falling out of it. This I got this in Monterey uh, at my friend's house uh, way up above Big Sur. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think it's a great visual, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I have weird stuff on my desk, too. <laughs> but it all makes sense to me. <laughs> well, it's authentic and organic for you, Angela. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. It does all make sense to me. And I'll see someone uh, that has never been to my home come in and kind of <laughs> look at it and go, wow. Okay. Yeah. Because I mean, first you pass the room where we have a lot of um, altar stuff and, and that kind of thing. And then you come in and there's my desk. And yeah, there's three computers and four monitors and pedals and <laughs> pedals and oils and, and incense. They're like, where have I arrived? <laughs> Oh my God, you're you're a sister from another mother for me. <laughs> They've got through your pericardium gate, okay, mm -hmm. and they're in the inner sanctum, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have an altar as you enter our front door, too. So I, yeah, we have it, and I love it, and I I don't know how I lived without it before I got it put together. And then they walk in the living room and go, "There's no TV in here." I'm like, "No, we do TV." <laughs> no, yeah, but I have fun things to do than that. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh, a man servant. Oh, a, a, a man just appeared out of the green room. With there. food. With food. Um, yeah, there, there there may not be TV, but if you sit down on the couch, you're going to see four oracle decks and two tarot decks. Yeah. I just got my latest one. It was from a, a GoFundMe, and it's a Winnie the Pooh tarot deck. Oh, my God. That food. sounds so fun. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. Well, I don't know if <laughs> It's just another tarot deck. Or <laughs> advertising the deck. So, Brandy, uh, some tarot uh, deck users have been uh, using the <clears throat> Acuromatherapy deck in with their tarot readings. Oh, I like that. Crazy fun. Yeah. And I even pull cards like past, present, and future with these cards. And then we work on that point in oil with something that re relates to your past and present and future. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So and then, you, then you can send them away with not only with the knowledge and the feeling, but if you give them the oils and let them right. you know, choose if they want to sit in their past today or, uh -huh. or not. I mean, whatever Throw works. homework. <laughs> Row homework with oils. Look at it all come together. Well, and be better. If, if you give them the oil on a Q-tip for the point yes. and give them the Q-tip to take home. Okay. And if you did three different oils for three different points, then you have a little bouquet. Oh, I love Put them in the little mini Ziplocs yeah. and have them take them home because then they don't have to put them up. To, it's not in my trash can. Um, right. There's still oil in there. It's still got two, three times it could be useful. Okay. Right. And what, I've gotten stories back. Like some people that throw them in the car. Okay. And they're in a traffic jam and they open up the bag and they go, I love this traffic jam. <laughs> Which is a real different way to have a traffic jam. I can see your, I can, Brandy, I can see that the wheels in your head spinning right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are. They are. Well, as, they, as they should be. Um, we're, we're, we're near and wrapping up. Um, what I love about this, this triangle is literally you can help put the healing in someone's hands or at least damn close in someone's wrists, okay? And you then give them something they can self-use, self-reference, and in a way, self-medicate and even self-meditate, okay? About how they would like life to be or the, how they would like themselves to be. 
okay? Um, permission to be authentic. I know I didn't have that when I was in high school. You know, I don't think social media is really uh, fostering that in people generally. Okay. Um, no, it the, gives them a mirror. It gives them a mirror of what they think society is and they try to reflect it. Right. And it's not real. So then it, it's not even close to being attainable. Therefore, where's the authenticity, let alone for your own human self, not the authenticity, authenticity of your community or wherever you're spending that time. I just feel like it's just such a bad idea. Well, and in all of my social posts, I've been trying to ask more questions of people. Mm -hmm. What are you doing that's creative today? How are you taking care of yourself? What's right. important to you? Those kinds of things. So it at least gets someone thinking about, you know, reflecting back to their inner self instead of demanding that they be a certain way out there. And I think these points speak to that. Come back to center. Come back to your own heart, your own authenticity, and and work from that space. Before we wrap up, mm -hmm. that deck that you had. Yeah. Where do I get that? Oh. I, there's a woman that sells them. Her name is Angela Sidlow. Okay. That's what I thought. I'm gonna, Maybe I uh, saw her on Be Connected. I'll hit her up. Yes, I would be connected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Let me, I don't know. Let me put a. a I if, you wanted, if you record, I don't know if it records your chat, but if you put a link there or something, that might be nice for. I'm just going to put my link tree link in here. Okay. And then you'll see all, all the stuff. stuff. They can click that. I think it'll open got up. Got it. And it'll show you the deck there. Nope. Got yeah, it. This, this deck has gone to 12 countries. So, yes, Brandy, we are putting those little monkeys out there to eat their fruit. Truly. <laughs> Try to raise it up for sure. Yeah. Oh, and there's the protocol. Yeah. What yes. I, I This is my favorite thing about the social media that is called Zoom is I can drop something in the chat and you can have it. Okay. Right. Um, and, and I'll be connected. I can put it on my sidebar and you can click it and open a new tab. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's usefulness in this. There's usefulness in the social posts and stuff like that. Um, but it's kind of like um, the sandalwood forests in India and Sri Lanka. Um, mostly they're utilized by poachers or historically they have been utilized by poachers. Okay. And right. so to do something to grow it genuinely, uh, usefully. And so someone can be self-reflective and self-healing with it. Um, that's, that's permission to be human. Um, yeah. I mean, I know, <laughs> Brandy, I got a 24-year-old and an 18-year-old, okay? So we're in the neighborhood, okay? Right. Um, and, you know, the 18 year old's graduating the, um, next month. Okay. Yeah. And I basically trained both of them, her older sister before her. Um, people are going to ask you a lot. Okay. What are you going to do when you grow up? What are you going to do next? Where are you going? Okay. And I said, listen, whatever you answer, what I want you to answer is happy. I'll be happy when I grow up. I want to do it now because that'll help me grow up. All right. Um, it doesn't mean happy is manic, um, but happy in being oneself. Okay. And it's whatever one is called. Isn't it funny about the definition of happy, though? Because it is not one definition and it's not even one definition your whole life. Because now happy is me and my garden listening to music, right? <laughs> Learning, exploring um, in a very calm way. But in my 30s, that manic was all about it, right? Get on the hamster wheel, loved it, achieving. This is how I'm adding value. This is how I get my own value, my own self-esteem. It's from this job, from this, from this outside affirmation. So yeah, it's just amazing how that word changes over your life. Yeah, as I've gotten older, happy and content, Hold hands together. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, there you go. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. The joy of a gardener is different than the joy of Friday night. Very much. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, right. What were we looking at? We were looking at something, uh, an event that people were raving about. I'm like, there's no way I'd want to be in the same room with that many people squished together. That's fun. (laughs) You know, it's it's like my big lie is, oh, I'm down for anything because unless I'm not home by nine. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I want to get the pajamas at nine, maybe sitting on the deck. (laughs) Oh, God, I love you, Brandy. (laughs) Yes, indeed. All right. The magic and wisdom of essential oils. And this has been fun today. I've enjoyed it. And we'll do it again next month. Which will be June 8th, which will be the second. Right before I go to the Azores for an aromatherapy trip. Okay. Well, hmm, what are we going to talk about then? Well, oils for, I was going to say tripping, but I didn't mean that. I mean, travel oils, safe travel oils. I will will say this, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, During the pandemic and one of the way, when when one of the waves was way down and people were going back out, outside and listening to music, I was at a table um, with like eight people, most of them from my dance tribe. And I was sitting there with my my bundle of oils, okay? Mm-hmm. And I was passing around three of them. One of them was Palo Santo. And someone from another table came over and said, can I do that? <laughs> there you go. And, and the, he goes, what right. are you doing anyway? And I said, I'm microdosing my friends with essential oils. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you're welcome to join us. Did you have the anti-vibe blend um, with you? I had the anti blend, yep. I have to show you before we go, the cute little... Um, kit that uh cindy de la rocha put together and it's got a little handle on it and another little pouch in here you can put whatever your business cards or something it opens up the deck fits inside of it and she has taken all the oils that are used in the deck and done little two (gasps) bottles that are pre-diluted amazing amazing Yes, and um, they're they're so adorable, and they're in a hard like a hard um, foam thing. But uh, you know, here they are, little two mils already done, and the the labels on them are not paper; they're like a a plastic that's not going to rub the the label, you know, the name of it off or anything. Well, I mean, you put oil. so much care <clears throat> into these; they're they're beautiful. They so, yeah. Um, Super excited. This is going to be my travel. I'm taking this to the Azores with me and, nice. <laughs> and every place else. If it's in the camper. Use pericardium six as you go through the TSA, even if you do have the fast pass. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the fast pass, but I used to. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Shall we? Let's send some energy out. Lovely, lovely time today. I look forward to watching the recording too. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. Solar flare frequency sending you. <laughs> Sunshine. Okay. <laughs>